Good evening and salutations, my Days of Alive fans. So, uh, <laughs> I'm going to be honest, and maybe this is Dave's fault for doing it. The whole wedding, Leo's and Gwen's, and how that fell apart, and just how epic those two episodes were. I feel like they leveled up in that episode. And ever since then, I mean, the episodes have been bad, but they weren't exactly great either. And this episode was kind of just, well, more middle of the road. I know it's kind of built into Friday's, you know, cliffhanger and everything like that. And I'm pretty sure that episode is going to be um, pretty great. But let's get into this episode. I want to talk about... Um, Eric and Bella for a minute because all they really do <clears throat> in the beginning is catch up. Bella talks about her experience with the devil and how it's not exactly the same as, you know, what happened with Marlena. Nothing really comes from it, so um, they don't really go anywhere with it. One of the things that Eric said, that I'm going to be honest, I wouldn't sit there and say it perplexed me, but it's not the way that most people would have handled it. And maybe because, you know, Eric is a priest, he has more patience, he's a little bit more forgiving. You know, he was sitting there talking about Bella's marriage. One of the things he said that, you know, he wished he did differently was not be so hard on the call, was to be more forgiving to Nicole, okay? The woman who cheated on him and lied about it and was going to continue to lie to his face pretty much every day for the rest of her life if she had the chance, he said that he wished he would have been more forgiving. Yeah. Um. Now... <sighs> This whole trip to Africa, like, did, you know, a couple of days after they got married, was stupid, okay? It was stupid. It needed to happen because, you know, Greg wanted to leave, and this was kind of like, you know, a good way for him to leave if he wanted to come back, and so I get it. But that trip ruined his marriage. It ruined both of their marriages. And every day that she didn't see him was every more day that she grew resentful. She got so resentful, so drunk and everything like that, she wound up hooking up with Xander. Now, she could have told the truth. She chose not to do it. Okay? And, you know, Eric played a part in the fact that he chose to leave and be gone for an extended period of time knowing that it can cause damage to their marriage. That was a choice that he also made. Okay, so he's not entirely blameless when it comes towards the end of their marriage. So I, I get taking accountability. But, you know, with that being said, this is on the call. For him to sit there and be like, man, I wish I would have been more forgiving. It's like, um, that's <laughs> and at the end of the day it's his perspective it's something that I've learned to well I, I shouldn't sit there and say I've learned I've doing my best to accept you know a lot of times you know in, in life you know somebody has a different perspective than you and it doesn't necessarily always make them wrong it just makes them have a different viewpoint and it's angering sometimes, especially when you feel like, bro, are you kidding me? Really? The, the sky, the sky isn't 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 red; it's blue. But you know, dude could be colored. But my my point of what I'm saying is that as stupid as I think that what he said, as far as him being more forgiving, at the end of the day, you know, that's. 
<laughs> that's that's his choice. So um, <laughs> you know, it it is what it is. Now they talk about Bella and her marriage and the fact that she's upset that Sean lied to her. Okay, that it wasn't the cheating part really; it was the lying part. And I 100% agree with her as far as him not saying anything. And him snitching talking about, I was ashamed, and this, that, and the third. And it was like, so what, you just was never going to bring it up and just, what, hope for the best? Like, come on, bro. At any point, she could have, it, it's like, you can't be stupid enough to sit there and think at any point she was not going to throw it in his face. Where you just woke up every day, went to work, and was like, well... <laughs> Dodge another bullet today. Let's see how it's going to go tomorrow. It was stupid. It was stupid. It was selfish. Um, you know, I understand the whole him being ashamed and everything, but bro, you're in a marriage. You're in a marriage. You're in a united front. What affects you affects her. Vice versa. Okay, so for him to sit there and kind of keep that to himself, left an opening for her to get hurt. And that's something that he chose to do. So I, I don't respect his choice. And I understand the whole Sean throwing the cheating thing in her face. And while that may not have been the right time to do it, especially since she just found out, after a couple of days or maybe a couple of weeks, then he could have thrown it in her face. Because let's be completely honest. She wasn't tricked by the devil. She wasn't drunk or anything like that. She made the choice to have sex with someone else other than her husband. Okay. So for her to sit there and be like, well, I can't believe you threw it in my face. I was like, well, sweetheart, it did happen. Okay. It's not like I just made it up. It happened. You know, and this whole self-righteous Getting upset. I can't believe you threw it in my face. Really? You, you really can't believe I, I threw this in your face after you just came at me for the same thing that you did. You can't believe that. And you're a lawyer, right? Okay. Um, pretty sure you got to be smart to be a lawyer. So what you just said was, um, was pretty stupid. But okay, whatever. Anyway, Eric convinces her to... Give, you know, the marriage another try since she wants to, since she still loves him. Now, Jan, you know, comes up with this whole, well, she doesn't really come up with this whole thing. The, the bottom line is that she has a condition. Jails aren't the most sanitary places. And on top of that, well, it's jail. So, you know, she says that there's people that don't like her. Let's just sit there and say for the sake of argument. She didn't say that. There's always a chance of somebody wanting to put bodily harm on her. Same way they did with Gabby. Okay? So that's a risk factor in itself. As, you know, Sean tries to come up with all these different things like, oh, they could put you on bed rest, I could talk to the warden, yada, yada, yada. What it really comes down to is he's not going to sit there and punish his child. For her being a nut job. You know, for, for her piss poor choices that she made in life. He's not going to do that. So, you know, they release her under Sean's custody to move in um, for her pregnancy. Because to be honest, the warden was like, oh yeah, we also have overcrowding. So, you know, you kind of do me a favor. But, um, okay, sure. They get home, Bella gets there, and, well, Bella gets surprised again because Sean didn't bother to give her a heads up. Hey, I called and I sent the message or whatever, and, um, you know, nope, she gets in, sees Jan Spears, as she comes home to try to be like, you know what, maybe because I can try to work something out. So that clearly just went down the drain. I'm going to be completely honest. I do not really care for Ben and John, Johnny scenes whatsoever. Um, I get why they were there. All they pretty much did was kind of rehash everything that happened before. 
And don't get me wrong, it's very important. Because, I mean, not that long ago, I was still new to the party. Still kind of new to the party, but in some ways. My point is, I need to know what's going on. So what he did was rehash everything that happened with Johnny, his marriage, how the devil screwed him over, and, you know, Ali, and breaking him free, and all that other stuff. So after we get caught up again, um, well, pretty much that's about it. Ben tries to break the chains, and, you know, Johnny's like, I tried, it's not gonna work. Um, so Ben starts yelling, and Johnny's like, that's not gonna do anything, and Ben is like, well, do you have a better idea? No, so we're just going to sit there and keep yelling. Um, now, you probably shouldn't be yelling because you might want to conserve your strength. I mean, let's be honest, it's not like the devil's come back there to make sure that, you know, you boys are being fed. So you might want to sit there and conserve the strength and energy that you have because it's not like people really come there too often to pay their respect to the dear departing. Um... But no, what they do is to Danielle. So, there's that. Um, the devil doesn't really do too much of anything with Ciara. Um, you know, at first Ciara wakes up, she's like, where's Ben at? And Ali gets there, and Ali makes up some sort of note, because I guess she got it from Ben before. It's like, Ben went out, did some stuff, or whatever. And so they, at this point... The devil gives, you know, Sierra some of, um, you know, Henry's baby clothes that he outgrew. So you talk about that, but at this point, Sierra is still feeling off. Like, she's like, yo, it's not like him to just leave without saying anything. And on top of that, she feels when he goes to bed, she feels when he wakes up because she's a light sleeper. So she's like, she just can't shake that feeling. She winds up going to Ben's job. He's not there, winds up going to Roman's pub and comes to see Eric and is like, yeah, I haven't seen Ben and I don't know where he's at and she's still worried. Now, Ali, Ali Abla went to the prison to talk to Christian Maddox. And I'm going to be completely honest, there's a, there's a line that she says that it's just like, why? It's like, well, I came in here to see you for two reasons or like two things. And one is him talk is her talking about um, Christian's, you know, you know, sexuality or the fact that he's bisexual. And I was just like, oh, okay, why, why was that important? Like, why was that? Imp I, I really want to know why was that important. For me, I don't really care about someone's sexuality. Love is love. I care about you. If you're a good person or a bad person. So I don't understand why they felt the need to really sit there and be like, one, you know, we both have in common that, you know, we're both bisexual. Okay. Um, what does that have to do with anything that's going on? And then the second thing was, you know, Ben Weston is our way, is, in, is you know, is, is a pain in both of our asses. And I'm just like, you, you couldn't have just let off with that. You, you just had to throw that in there for what? To stretch out the time? Because I feel like at that point, that's literally all it was there for, was to stretch out the time. So, that's something. Um, now, if you saw the previews, you know that, you know, he gets out and he's terrorizing Sierra and all this other stuff. Um... And I'm not going to lie, I was there kind of wondering how that was going to happen. I thought it was um, the devil, you know, being um, Christian Maddox. But, you know, he likes to sit there and delegate his task, his, you know, his, his task to other people and things of that nature, which is why we saw some old familiar faces. Um, it was good seeing... I can't remember his name, but the person who terrorized Nicole. It was good seeing that actor again. I know that he was undergoing some surgery and stuff like that. I hope he does actually make a return to the soap opera world because the dude has a very fascinating story about, like, his journey there and everything like that. And 
it'd be really interesting to see him on one of these soap operas. It's unfortunate there's really only four. I mean, how back in the day we had a lot, <laughs> a lot. Um, but you know, I hope he gets better and you know he comes back at some point in time. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of feel like that's about it for the most part. Like I said, not really too much of anything happened of importance except for the end. We got to see Christian Maddox, and so you know he's gonna be playing a part at least this week when it comes towards um days and the whole Jan Spears thing. Eh, whatever. Um. I've gotten to a point with Jan Spears where I just don't even bother to complain anymore because it's like, it is what it is. I'm not a fan of the character. Every time she talks, every... I just I just don't like her. I don't like the fact that she's super obsessed with um Sean. I feel like she's actually really a gorgeous woman that can pretty much get almost any other man that she wants. But for some odd reason, she's just like stuck on stupid when it comes to her Sean. And, um, I don't know, it's like one of my subscribers said, um, it's like sometimes they need Jan to make Belle and Sean interesting, which is really poor piss writing when you got to sit there and put in a third person to make the other two more interesting. It's sort of like GH with, um, Brand No Sasha. It's like they got so boring that they had they actually had to sit there and get Brando's annoying ass mother in there just to make it interesting. That's pretty sad. Anyway, with that being said, I'm gonna go. I wanna thank you for watching. Also, I think I just kind of throw this out in this video. Maybe I throw it in the other videos. I'm just like thinking about like moving, you know, as far as moving forward with um reviews and stuff like that. Specifically with YNR and BMB, like when it gets really late, like 10 o'clock, um, when it gets to a point where it's like, if I feel like it's getting to 10 o'clock, I'm probably, I'm thinking about maybe not, you know, putting out a review around that time because I don't know. I just, there's, there's a couple of reasons why. One, I'm tired. And at that point, if I'm not like super up, I feel like my heart's not in it. And that's number one. Number two, the low numbers start to hurt their alg algorithm as far as pushing out some of my more popular videos out or any video out. It's like it won't push out as much. And by doing that, it kind of hurts the channel. It's, it's, a, it's weird. It's weird. Um, and I wish I knew about this sooner, but, you know, that's a thing also. So I'm, I'm I'm thinking about it. I don't know. There's a lot of times where it's like, even when it's like 40 people that watch it, I think it's amazing that those 40 people watched it. Because even though I've been doing YouTube for a while, you know, I still really appreciate anyone that watches my video. So it's always kind of up to debate, but I was just sitting there thinking about it like, yo, it's like 10, 20. And... You know, I didn't want to reviewing why nor yesterday. I wanted to watch it because I want to keep up with it. But I didn't. I didn't want to reviewing it because I was just super tired and you know, it just it just didn't seem like a good idea as far as my heart being in it and also just hurting the channel. Um, because hell, even my days numbers have actually went up, <laughs> which is is pretty amazing. Um, and I kind of want to keep it on the going up part. I'm at 867 subscribers so far, and, um, it's just mind-blowing. And I kind of want to keep that trend going. In order to keep the trend going, and kind of, kind of get the, the whole, you know, moving parts working, if you know what I'm saying. So, it's just a lot going on. Um, but honestly, to tell you the truth, it's mostly for the fact that my heart's not in it. And I put it out that late because I'm just super tired. Um, but I don't know. It's like, I feel like maybe one day I probably want to break my rule. Like if something's like crazy that happens, like, yo, I got to sit there and talk about it. But I just want to put it out there. Anyway, with that being said, I'm going to go. 
Oh, and thank you for watching. Be safe. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below, and I will see you in the next video.